Good morning. Everybody good? Hey, have you enjoyed uh, the series that we're doing currently on the book of Revelation? Come on, how many of you enjoyed it so far? How many realize you're, you're learning a lot, but in learning a lot, sometimes when you look at Revelation, you realize, I mean, I, I've, I've read, actually read Revelation for a chapter for almost an entire year, but I realize at the end of it, I really don't know too much more than when, when I started. Like, it's just like, there's so much going on, but man, you know in your spirit, man, God is really building you up, and I hope this series so far has really built you up, and you've learned a lot, and you're growing in the Lord. Uh, I know for me this morning, uh, this is a very challenging message. We're going to be in Revelation chapter 20 uh, towards the end, but we're going to be comparing the judgment seat of Christ with the the great white throne judgment. The judgment seat of Christ with the great white throne judgment. I want to start off this morning by asking you a question. Uh, How many of you love to give good rewards to your kids? Love giving good rewards to your kids. Man, I love giving good rewards to my kids. There's nothing like Christmas time, and when they come down, they come into into the room with all the gifts, and their faces light up, and they get that gift they really wanted, and they're just so excited. There's nothing like that, is there? Uh, I also know as a wise father not to give rewards, not to give gifts unless they've really earned those gifts, right? Uh, My kids, they were both on the same soccer team last year. Ruth, she's uh, 10 years old, and Caleb, he's nine. They were both on the same team, and uh, Ruth was a defender, and Caleb was the striker, and Caleb scored a ton of goals. Ruth was tenacious on defense and stopped a lot of people from scoring, and they ended up going undefeated in their soccer season. And yeah, Uh, So as a dad, man, you can imagine that watching your kids play, both of them on the same team and them going undefeated, man, it was such a treat for me and Laura. We had a ton of fun watching that season. But when they won it all, when they went undefeated, I said to them, and they received a trophy, I said to them, hey, this is the first trophy in soccer that you've actually really earned. This is the first one that you've earned. Put all the other ones in a box someplace and forget about them. But man, this one you guys have worked hard at. You've put in the work. You've put in the effort. And man, you deserve this trophy. Like you have done so good. I'm so proud of you. You have, you have won uh, the race. You have, you have finished. And this is really what Paul is talking about in Corinthians when he says, run the race in such a way that you receive the prize. Run the race in such a way that you receive a full reward. C.S. Lewis in the book Mere Christianity, uh, he writes this and he says, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this one. Isn't that powerful? Listen, one day you will stand before Jesus Christ as your judge. You'll either be going to heaven or hell. He will judge both believers and non-believers. And in this room, some of you in this room, as a believer, you will Be in front of Jesus and be so disappointed because you've kind of wasted your life. Because he will judge both believers and non-believers. This morning, I've entitled my message, Judgment Day. (laughs) And with a title like that, we need some prayer. We need some Holy Spirit in this place, don't we? So let's just pray and let's invite the Lord here right now. Holy Spirit, we know that you are here. I pray that, Father, you would open our eyes clearly to see, Jesus, what you have for us in Scripture today. I pray that, Lord, you would open our ears to hear. That, Lord, we wouldn't just be hearers of your word, but, God, we would be doers of your word. Lord, not a single person in this place, God, they might have made a mistake, but now, Father, They didn't come to hear me. They didn't come to hear some words, God, but they all came to hear you. And so, Lord, we say to you this morning, speak to us. We are your servants and we are listening. 
Lord, teach us your ways. We want to know you and find favor with you. So, Lord, we walk with an awareness of who you are, Jesus. Lord, you are a soon returning king. May we begin to live our lives like it, Jesus. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Thank you that you're here right now in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's read a couple of scriptures. 2 Peter 2.9, it says this, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. 2 Peter 3, 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition. Perdition here means eternal judgment. Until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men, Matthew 12, 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed for men to die once, but after that, the judgment. So let me ask you a couple questions. Is there a judgment day coming? Yes. Will believers be judged? Yes. Will unbelievers be judged? Yes. Will everyone be judged? Yes. Will we be judged, though, kind of a trick question, will we be judged by grace or by works? Yes. By both grace and works. Now listen to me this morning. I'm not saying this morning that salvation isn't by grace and grace alone. Salvation is by grace and grace alone. There is nothing that we could ever do to earn salvation. There's no work you could ever do to earn salvation. It is a free gift given to us freely through the cross, through the blood of Jesus. But make no mistake about it, we will be judged for our works and the things that we do. Let me show you this this morning. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. For God will bring every, would you say every? Every work into judgment, including every, would you say every again? Every secret thing, whether good or evil. Revelation 20, 13, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, would you say each? Each one according to his works. 1 Peter 1, 17. And if you call on the Father, who calls on the Father? How many of you call on the Father in this room? Yeah. If you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's works, Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here, being the time that you were living on the earth, in fear, in fear and in reverence of the Lord. Matthew 16, 27, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each, would you say each? Each according to his works. Revelation 22, 12, last scripture. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every, say every, Everyone according to his work. You see, I am an each. You are an each. We are an every. Each and every one of us will be judged according to our works. But will we be saved by works? No. Listen to this. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. I love this scripture. I am so thankful for this scripture. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift. What a good gift it is. It is a gift of God. Would you say these three words with me right now? Not of works. Come on, say it again. One last time. Not of works works, lest anyone should boast. So how do we explain this? How do we explain that we're saved by grace and grace alone, but we're judged by works? 
I want to give you two simple words this morning to remember this by. Belief and behavior. Two words, belief and behavior. Belief determines where you will spend eternity. Behavior determines how you're going to spend eternity. Belief determines where you'll spend eternity. Behavior determines how you will spend eternity. In heaven, we're going to be judged and rewarded for our works. In hell, people are going to be punished for their works. How many of you are so thankful that if you were a believer that you were not going to be judged for the bad things that you do here on this earth? The Bible says they are going to be forgotten, they're going to be wiped away, and we're going to be judged only by the good things that we do. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect. I make some mistakes sometimes, and I am so thankful for God's grace, God's unmerited favor, that, man, he has given us a free gift of salvation that is not anything that we could do that, that to deserve it or to earn it, but he's given it freely to us. You see, where you spend eternity is completely dependent upon whether you believe in Jesus or not. At the judgment seat of Christ, everyone is a believer. At the great white throne judgment, everyone is an unbeliever. And this is why people may ask the question, well, why is there a judgment anyways, Adam, if everyone at the judgment seat of Christ is a believer and everyone at the uh, great white throne judgment is an unbeliever? Because at those judgments, it's not a judgment of belief, it's a judgment of works. We will be judged by our works. And this is what I'm trying to tell you this morning. How we live, as believers, it matters. What we do while we are here on this earth, it all matters. Every single day, every single moment, it matters. It all matters. So I want to talk about these two judgments right now. So let's talk first about the judgment seat of Christ. Now everything I'm going to cover in scripture from this point forward until we get to point two is going to be talking about believers, okay? So make sure as I'm talking about this, we're talking about believers in this section, okay? So number one, the judgment seat of Christ. Some would refer to this as the Bema seat. This is all for believers, okay? The believer's judgment. Everything we're covering is believers. Second Corinthians 5.10. For we must all, could you say all? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each, could you say again, each? Each appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done, in other words, to receive the things they've done here on the earth, in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Romans 14.10, but, but why do you judge your brother, or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all, all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Again, this is talking about believers. 1 Corinthians 3.10, this is Paul writing. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build on it. Again, this is Paul writing, another building on it, and this is referring to Apollos, who was building upon the foundation. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone, this includes us, builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear for the day. Day is capitalized here because it's talking about the day of judgment. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work. So the fire is going to test everyone, every believer's works of what sort it is. If anyone, verse 14, if anyone's work which has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. So he's going to lose his reward, but he himself will be saved. These are all believers we're talking about here yet again, okay? Yet so as through fire. So what this is saying is this. You can build with gold, silver, and precious jewels as a believer. Or as a believer, you can build with wood, hay, and straw. 
You can be building and doing things that are going to be eternal for the kingdom of God. And you're going to receive a reward when you get to heaven for it. Or you can be building and doing things that are going to be burnt up. In modern day American Christianity, you know, it's very easy to fall into the trap of just living for the weekend, living and just, man, I just want to spend my life and enjoy my life, enjoy my family. You might be saved, but you're not doing things that you're going to receive a reward for eternally. Now, you can also be doing things that are eternal, but because of your heart, because of the way you do them, they're going to be burnt up, and you will not receive a reward. Let me give you an example of this before I leave a scripture about it. Uh, you can be on the worship team. I love our worship team. They have an amazing hearts. They do an amazing job. Yeah. You can be on the worship team, and you can be ministering to God through your worship. You can be doing it for him. Because of your heart posture, the Lord is using you and moving through you and, he's, uh, and you're doing it for God and not for yourself. But the same person who's singing the same songs, doing the same thing, going through the motions, could be doing the same exact thing, could be doing it from a heart of, man, I just want to receive glory. Man, I want people to look at me and their heart posture for the Lord is not one that is pure. Will those two people receive the same reward? Absolutely not. They will not receive the same reward because one person is doing it unto God in ministry unto the Lord. The other person is doing it because their heart posture before him is not right. Listen what Jesus says about this in Matthew 6, 1 through 4. He says, take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise... You have no reward. You have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, you do a terrible deed. Do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a terrible deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your terrible deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret Watch this word. Himself. Himself reward you. Notice this. God himself will reward you. God himself. When we get to heaven and it's time to account for all that we've done here on the earth, it's not as if we're going to be in a huge room with billions of people, and God walks down and says, hey, y'all have done good. And the person in the back is like, man, what, what do you say? They, they don't have enough wood? Like, what's going on? Like, no, it's not going to be like that at all. Jesus himself. You know, I, I've known this, but when I read this scripture this week and I realized it really became like a rhema word in my heart, meaning it really became alive in my heart and I knew it in that moment, I mean, I'm going to be able to stand in front of Jesus himself, like Jesus himself. Do you understand that? Jesus himself. Jesus himself, I'm going to stand before the Lord and account for what I've done. And man, I, I hope that I'm able to stand there proudly. Uh, my, my son, uh, when he was about four or five years old, he was in this, um, he, he went to Awanas, which uh, on the other side of town, and uh, I remember them giving him a reward because he memorized all the scripture, and he was the best behaved in his class. That's my son. That's my boy. He was the best behaved, and so he received a reward out of everybody in his class, and I remember when they called his name, he wasn't expecting it to happen. They called him up, and when they gave him the reward, they put a ribbon around his neck, they gave him like a Awanas trophy. I remember he stood there with his shoulders back, man, and he was so proud. He was so proud that he was receiving this reward. And I think about that. Man, when I get before the Lord, I don't want to be standing there ashamed of what I've done. 
I don't want to be standing there slouched over with my head down. Man, I want to stand there just like my son did on that day, so proud to receive the rewards that God has for me. I want to stand there so proud because I am in front of Jesus himself. It's not like I'm all alone in some room it's just, uh, and, and he's far away from me. Man, I am in front of Jesus himself, and he is going to give me a reward. I want to stand there proudly of what I've done. You know, in this world, in this uh, American life, we, we, we do everything we can to prepare for retirement for 30 years. 30 years of retirement's coming. And at the end of retirement, just imagine this, after you retire, and on that day you retire, uh, all of your money that you saved it from that point, the, the bank just bankrupt, gone away, and all your money in the accounts are all gone. Your 401k, psh, gone. The economy crashes, and, and, the, and the government doesn't have any money to give you any of your pension or any of your social security. And uh, imagine on that same day that your house burns down. Very, 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 very bad day. Just imagine that. And on that day, the insurance company has no money to help you out anymore. You know, this is going to be like some believers who enter into the kingdom of God. Hey, they made it to retirement, but they got nothing to show for it. They've made it. They've arrived. But everything that they stored up, everything that they worked for, was just wood, hay, and straw, and was burned up. Nothing to show for it. Listen to me this morning. What you do in this life matters. I don't want to stand before the Lord ashamed of what I've done. Listen to this scripture, 1 John 2, 28, and now little children abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Not be ashamed before him at his coming. He's talking to believers here. Why would believers be ashamed before the Lord? Because they wasted their life. Yeah? They wasted their life. They believed in Jesus. They didn't serve him. They didn't love him. They didn't walk with him. They didn't give their lives completely and fully for the kingdom of God and its cause. They lost it all. And now it's over, and they're not going to receive any rewards. You know, I... Um, when I was a kid, I went to a, a basketball camp because I was really big into basketball back in the day. And I remember I went to UNC bas basketball camp and there was, I got a picture with Dean Smith, you know, Vince Carter and Antoine Jameson, if you guys know basketball at all, if anyone in this room does, uh, they were there. And I just remember uh, that week though, I really just wanted to enjoy my friends. And I kind of goofed off the whole week and, and everything. But at the end of the, of the week at basketball camp, they had a table full of trophies. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I've goofed off the entire time. I'm definitely not getting one of those trophies. I wish they would have told me they're going to hand out trophies at the end of this thing. I'm 12 years old, and I'm already this super competitive person. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm not going to get anything because I goofed off. You know, some of us will enter into the kingdom of heaven just like that. We're not, we're not realizing that there's going to be rewards on the other side of this life. But there is going to be rewards. What we do here on the earth, it matters. Let me ask you a question. Will the person who's a believer, who lives for the Lord, who gives their life for Jesus, who tithes, who serves the poor, who does everything they can uh, to, to share the gospel with everyone they come in contact with, who doesn't know the Lord and the prompt, they listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, will they receive the same reward as the person who just goes through the motions, doesn't really follow the Lord? Will those two people receive the same reward? No, they won't. They won't. What we do matters. Listen, this world matters. And I want to tell you this morning, you were called to make a difference. God, he has a purpose. He has a plan for you as an individual. You may not feel like it right now in your life. You may feel like, man, everything is just a mess. I don't know what's going on. I'm here to tell you this morning, God has a purpose for your life, a personal plan for you, a personal plan for each and every one of you. 
And anything less than passionate service to the Lord is going to frustrate the very calling, the very reason why you exist. God has placed you in this earth for such a time of, as this to make a difference for his kingdom, not to live your life for yourself. The enemy wants to tell you, man, just go and enjoy your life. Hey, you're safe. Hey, he's not scared of Christians who don't do anything for the kingdom of God. Who is he scared of? Christians who live their life fully devoted, fully, completely following the Lord, giving everything up for him. And I don't care if you're six years old and you're young. I don't care if you're 70 years old. It's not too late. It's not too early to begin to live your life completely on fire for Jesus. You have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a purpose in this life. And listen, every single one of us, we make up the body of Christ and it is beautiful. It is beautiful. We all have different giftings and Lord has set us aside to do different works and different things for his kingdom. And when we all come together as a church, as Journey Church to fulfill what God has called us to do individually, man, we are gonna make such a huge impact on this city, on this nation, and even I believe, on this world because we begin to walk in fulfillment of what God has called us to walk in. You have a purpose. God has a destiny for your life. Walk in it. Stop talking about doing it. Stop saying, I'm gonna start it next week. Stop posting on Facebook that you're gonna do it or, or the appearance that you're doing it and just daggum do it, right? Just do it for the kingdom of God. Just do it. It matters. It matters. It all matters. You have a purpose. Number two. The great white throne judgment. Let's talk about this judgment now. Now, what we cover from this point forward, we're talking about the judgment for unbelievers, okay? This is the judgment for unbelievers. So Revelation uh, 20, the great white throne judgment. The unbelievers judgment. Revelation 20, verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne which is why it's called the great white throne. And him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open. Notice the plurality here, books were open. And another book, singular, was opened which is the book of life. Listen, this is a great example of belief and behavior. If you believe your name is in the book of life, okay? Now, all the works of everyone is written down in the books, okay? So see the books, the books are works. They're books of deeds of every single person. Let's continue reading. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades, Hades in Greek here is is hell, and death and hell delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one, according to his works. I asked you a question a moment ago, Will will believers receive the same reward? A believer who gives their life to the Lord and lives completely and fully for him, who shares the gospel, serves him selfishly, selflessly, will they receive the same reward as someone who just lives for the weekends and just goes through the motions? No, they will not. Now, will the unbeliever receive the same punishment as the person who may not really know the Lord? They're an atheist. But, you know, they don't really do anything wrong. They just kind of go through life, but they're overall, they're a good person. Will they receive the same punishment? Remember, belief determines uh, where you're going to go. Will they receive the same punishment as a rapist or a murderer? No, they won't. Just think about it. A person who is good, but they don't believe, they won't receive the same punishment as Hitler who killed six million Jews, will they? Listen to what scripture says about this. 
Matthew eleven twenty four. This is Jesus' own words. What are you, Chorazin? What are you, Bethsaida? For the mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre and Sidon. They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable. It will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. Verse 23, and you, Capernaum, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades, Hades meaning hell, for the mighty works which were done in you. Now watch this, this is an amazing statement from Jesus. For the, uh, which were done in you, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until the day. In other words, Sodom would have been saved if I would have gone there and done works, the same works in these three cities. Remember, Sodom and Gomorrah was the, uh, the city, the cities where not even 10 people were found righteous, and so it was destroyed by fire in the Old Testament. Verse 24, but I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment for, than for you. You know, that's not something you want to hear, is it? So what was done in these three cities? The mighty works of Jesus himself. The mighty works of Jesus himself. He went there, he healed, he preached the gospel. And yet they still rejected him. And he's saying here to these three cities, I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah would have been saved if I went and did those works, I went and did those things. Because how many of you know the Lord knows the heart? He knows what would have happened. But you, you've rejected me. And it's gonna be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah, whom I had to destroy, than it will be for you at Judgment Day. He's talking about degrees here. So is it possible then that unbelievers are storing up judgment for themselves? Yes, it's very possible. Romans 2, 5, but in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. You see, every person who receive the righteous judgment from God. And he says, because of the way you're acting, because of the hardness of your heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath. To the believer, he was saying, remember, I advise you to store up treasure in heaven. To the unbeliever, he's telling them, you're storing up for yourself wrath on the day of wrath. This morning, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you, but there is a healthy, as Bishop talked about this morning, there's a healthy fear that we must see the Father as. Because one day, every single one of us will come before Jesus and we will be judged for our works. We'll be judged. Now, how you believe depends on which judgment you go to. As I said before, the great, at the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat, which is the believer's judgment, everyone there is a believer. They'll be judged based on, uh, they'll be rewarded based on what they've done. But at the great white throne judgment, they're going to be judged and they're going to be punished for their works. And while you're here on the earth, this is the only time that you can choose to believe in Jesus. It is the free gift of salvation. And what happens when you choose to believe in Jesus is at that judgment, he's gonna cover over every single thing you've done wrong. It's gonna be blotted out white as snow. That's why God sent his only son. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that who would ever believe in him Whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. You have a choice to choose to believe or choose to reject God, just as those three cities did. What will you choose? I'd like to ask everyone in this room right now just to stand. Would you stand with me? Would you bow your head and close your eyes? 
while you're here on the earth, you have the opportunity to make a decision to believe. If I could beg of you, and I'm actually going to beg of you, I beg of you, give your life to Jesus. Choose to serve him. You know, while you're standing there with your eyes closed, I'm, I'm so bothered sometimes by this scripture, and I think about it a lot. Narrow is the road that leads to life. And wide is the road that leads to death. Many people think that they believe, and they're believing based on their parents or their grandparents or for some other reason, and they live their life and they go through their life thinking they believe, but they don't actually believe. Narrow is the road that leads to life. Wide is the road that leads to death. I want you to think for a moment right now, which road are you headed down? I beg of you, Choose life. Choose life. The Holy Spirit right now is calling and pricking your heart and he's showing you something right now. And if that is you this morning and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to uh, give all of who you are for the sake of the gospel, for his kingdom to come, I just want to invite you, would you raise your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus? With every head bowed and every eye closed, there's no one looking around right now. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand in the back, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Come on, yeah. All of heaven, come on, you knew better than that, all of heaven is rejoicing. All of heaven is rejoicing. We thank you, Lord. God, it is you and you alone who saves. I would like to invite everyone in this room right now. Would you pray this prayer with me? Everyone in the room, would you pray this prayer with me? If you raise your hands, would you pray this prayer? It's not about words, but man, it's from your heart that you are saying this. Everyone in this room, pray. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I'm in need of your grace. I recognize that you died on the cross for me so that I can have a relationship with you. So I choose to live for you from this point forward. Come into my life. Change everything. I live for you. If you prayed that prayer, welcome into the kingdom of God. Come on. Come on. Let's celebrate. We thank you, Jesus for drawing men to you, God. We thank you, God. Man, we are all sinners in need of the grace of God, and the only way to heaven is to believe. And if you prayed that prayer this morning, please, 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 we're opening it right now for ministry time. If you prayed that prayer as I dismiss everyone this morning, please come forward and pray with someone up here. Please do not, it's very important, if you raise your hand, do not leave this place without praying with someone up here. We want to help you out in your journey with the Lord. So come forward and receive prayer. Everyone is dismissed. If you need prayer for any other reason, they're up here to minister to you, to pray for anything you're going through. If you raise your hand, please come forward. We love you guys. Have an amazing week. Remember, go live and do great things for the, for the, for the kingdom of God. He has given you the grace because you would believe to do those works for him. Amen. Have a great week.